My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and my guest today, or actually, I'm your guest because I'm in your apartment. This, this is my friend May. Hello. How you doing? Good. How are you? And you were telling me, you, well, you're you're a newly minted audiophile, right? Yes, that's that's very true. <laughs> I used to be uh, into a home theater stuff, mm-hmm. um, so I used to uh, have a home theater room in my basement uh, in my previous house in Edmonton, Canada. Uh, I used to be big time into having multiple subwoofers and uh, Atmos set up with DTSX and Oro 3D kind of things. I used to host movie nights. Mm -hmm. But then when I moved to New York, again, um, living in a 420 square feet studio apartment, I figured that was not going to be physically possible. And I'm sure you made your your neighbors very happy. Yes, they will not be happy. (laughs) But I still want to listen to good music. So I wanted to get into stereo music. Mm-hmm. Um, so my original plan was just to get an integrated amplifier and two speakers and just keep it simple. Um, but then it evolved into separating every single component. Okay, but what, what was the, the, the original amp that you started with? Uh, it was the NADM27, okay. the integrated amplifier. I think it had just come out. It was a great amp. Uh, I think it put out about 100 watts per channel, class D amplification. Uh-huh. I have had prior experience with NAD. My uh, preamp, my preamplifier in Edmonton was a NAD amplifier, and NAD is also a Canadian company. Uh-huh. So I, that's why I chose NAD, and I like the sound. Uh-huh. Uh, but then I always wanted something better, and that's what I guess that's, everybody. That's you're an <laughs> if you didn't, if you just bought that, and you were done. Yes. Yes. Uh, you wouldn't. wouldn't <laughs> It's the thing of wanting better. Yes, you know. yes. That's and I still, you know, always want something more, something better, something, yeah. you know, change yeah, it and strange, see and compare right. and see how but it sounds. But since, since um, it's only been, well, it's been, been a year since you have sort of this level yes. of system. Mm-hmm. But before you had the, the home theater, did, did you have a good system then? Yes. Uh, so there was a company called Shoe Research. Um, it's, a, it's a U.S.-based company, California. HSU. HSU. It's right. pronounced Shoe, I shoe, think. Right. Yes. Um, so uh, I fell in love with Shoe uh, sound. In fact, when I um, ordered Shoe speakers from Canada, mm-hmm. I have not heard them at all. Mm-hmm. But I, just based on reviews right. uh, and what people talk about, speakers, I imported them to Canada. Uh, shipping and customs was more than the price of the speakers. Really? Yes. But I thought it was totally worth it. Uh-huh. I thoroughly enjoyed the song, mm-hmm. uh, the songs, the stereo music that I played through those speakers. Mm-hmm. And my home theater was uh, full of uh, shoe speakers, all my uh, front so end. So it's a, it's a single driver, like a yes. coaxial driver? It's a coaxial driver yeah. speakers. They had yellow drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends thought yellow was really not that great, but I <laughs> loved yellow. And I, you know, they thought I was probably the oddball, but I liked the yellow. Yeah, I but reviewed when, those for seen it. Or yeah, they were really good speakers. And I also got shoes um, subwoofer. Of course. That's yes. what he's really known for. Yes, yeah. that's what he was known for. And uh, I had two subwoofers, and I did um, have uh, an Anthem receiver as well at that point. Uh-huh. So I was using Anthem Arc to uh, place the subwoofers at the, at the specific spots, and I was having this U mic one to measure frequency responses okay. um, to see if I can get a flat frequency response for the subwoofer, and uh, it sounded pretty good. I used to have movie nights, and everybody that came to my house uh-huh. gave me compliments, so uh-huh. I, I would like to think so. Okay. <laughs> And you had to buy them food, of course. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that's why they were giving you Yes, <laughs> that's true. So you left uh, Edmonton to come to New York. Yes. And you work, you're, you work in a hospital. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then you started on this journey. See, I, was, I think of the audio thing as a journey because you start at one place yes. and you're progressing. Yes, and it's a never-ending journey it's a never for ending sure. Journey, right? <laughs> you, you never really get to the destination. Absolutely. You're on your way. Absolutely. And in fact, I think one of the first speakers I had was uh, Audio Physique uh, Tempo 5 speakers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they make the Tempo 5s anymore. I think uh-huh. they're called the Tempo Pluses now. Uh-huh. But they were fantastic speakers. The good thing about those speakers were they were uh, narrow and slender. Uh, so the speakers were perfect for a Manhattan apartment right, yeah, really and they had skinny. side, yeah, skinny and the then side woofers. Right. So I thought they were the best speakers I've ever had. And I thought I'm settled. I'm not going to change my speakers again. So Famous that's it. last words. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what we all say. Yeah. So, but then I started changing my components. At that point I had Von Gaylord, uh, preamplifier. Oh. I had Von Gaylord, um, cables, um, I did not have the power amplifier at that point, mm-hmm. and I also did not have the. Uh, oh, I had a Von Gaylord DAC at that point. Okay, but yes. we're gonna, we're going to do 
just letting everybody know. We're going to do a separate yes. walkthrough of each piece in the system. Mm -hmm. So we're going, to, we're going to get to that, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so you had you had some Gaylord stuff, and you had the audio physics, mm -hmm. and uh, but no turntable. No, t I had a turntable, uh, mm -hmm. a project uh, carbon turntable. Okay. I wasn't using much of the turntable. It was more like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> kind of you know uh, okay. uh, situation. So I probably had like five rackets that a friend loaned to me. Uh -huh. um, so that's that's about it. You know, I did not really pay attention to um, turntables okay. until about a month ago. Or a month ago. Um, yes, right. uh, yeah. when a friend of mine who actually lives close by uh -huh. is into turntables, he came to my house to listen to my system. I have a few friends that are audiophiles in this neighborhood, so we exchange stuff. We listen to each other's stuff. So he came and he invited me to his house and I went and listened to his uh, analog system and I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Digital sounds great, but analog sounds even better. Okay. So that's when I ended up uh, getting an an or getting into, you know, setting up an analog system. Mm -hmm. So this Scoutmaster is actually a brand new Scoutmaster. Obviously, you know, Mike set it up for Mike, me. Mike Trey? Yes, Mike uh, Trey set it up for me. But, um, but now I am falling in love with analog. Analog is so good. Mm. So since it's new to you, well, mm -hmm. not new because just for this turntable, but mm -hmm. how, how, do, how do you distinguish between listening to digital and listening to records? So listening to records, so I feel like, um, I don't know how else I should say this, but mm -hmm. organic, the sound is more organic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if, uh, that's a good way to put it. Um, you know, it's melodious. Uh, you hear the music. That's mm -hmm. how I feel when I listen to analog. You know, mm -hmm. it's... Analog, in my opinion, is not as transparent as digital, if okay. I want to put it that way. Well, that's fine. But digital is more transparent. Digital is more, um, uh, if I want to you know, assess my equipment, I probably will use digital stuff, I guess. Okay. But at the same time, if I want to just listen to music, fall asleep and, and relax, I uh -huh. feel like I get that in analog sound. Interesting. Yeah, yes. I, I think you nailed it. Neither one sounds like real music. But they are different, and to, and the way I think about it is that they can coexist, right? Like you do, yeah, you absolutely. Play records, and you play files, and you right. stream things, yeah. and everybody's happy, right? And in fact, I also did a blind test with uh, two of my friends oh, here in the same yeah. apartment. Uh -huh. So um, I connected uh, two inputs. One was analog, one was digital, uh -huh. um, and I switched from analog to digital. Uh, my friend was actually blindfolded, literally, literally blindfolded. blindfolded. Yes, I had a okay. blindfold put on my okay. friend. And I switched the inputs and I asked him which one he liked better. So it's an A-B-A -A comparison uh -huh. and he picked analog. Now you were playing the same music. Yes, the same oh, music, okay. the same exact uh, music. Actually, um, it was uh, Cat Edmondson's uh, oh, like Dreamers that. too. Yeah, yes. Like yeah. And he liked uh, analog better. It's great. I mean, I, for me, I mean, at least right now, the way I'm using my analog and my digital system is if I, uh, if I discover, if I want to discover new music, mm. I go digital because it's easy sure. to stream new, new Absolutely. music. Yeah. And once I start liking something, mm. um, I feel like I should get the analog version so I can listen to it and enjoy it. Yeah. You've so got a lot of company, a lot of people do the yes, same thing. Yes. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's something that I really like. But you know, you were saying that, you know, you had this mm -hmm. home theater uh, in Edmonton, but you, you do stereo, you watch movies in stereo with this system. Yes, right. I do, yes. And in fact, when I watch movies in stereo, I feel like the sound stage of this system is amazing because yeah. I get some of the effects that I used to get with my surround speakers, mm -hmm. with just stereo speakers, mm -hmm. which actually uh, proves my point that if you have a good stereo setup, you mm -hmm. probably don't need a center channel. Mm -hmm. And you also don't need surround speakers if the speakers can image well. Right. And so that, again, you know, goes back to uh, minimal components with maximum accuracy. Right. right. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been doing stereo home theater yeah. for ages. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, again, going back to types of music that I listen to, mm -hmm. um, I like jazz and I like female vocals. But have I always liked jazz? No, because I've never listened to jazz in a good system. Mm -hmm. I always like to go to jazz concerts and I love them, but when I listen to them on my, uh, you know, crappy stereo system or on a computer or on a phone, I didn't like them. Huh. But then when I actually listen to them on a good stereo system, which is how I actually got into jazz, recording. uh, jazz recordings, okay. the stereo separation, mm -hmm. the instrument separation, the, the bass, the, um, uh, the, the kind of um, music that you listen to on a good stereo system really draws you into the music. Regarding records, I was uh, getting a um, 
Dave Brubeck uh, record yeah. from the 1960s, I guess, or yeah. 65 or something like that, from a record store downtown in East Village. Mm -hmm. uh, back of the record is reading the, the label, which was like, you know, printed in very tiny letters. It said, mm -hmm. this recording was recorded in super high quality. And, you know, they mentioned how it was recorded. And it said it will be good for your future proof. It will be good for the oh. next several years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here we are. Seven, yeah. 60 years after Six that years was published. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we're, we're still enjoying that music and that's so true. Absolutely. Uh, vinyl hasn't gone anywhere. Vinyl is still here and it's great and it's what people like now, yeah. I guess. Well, that, mm -hmm. I mean, that does bring up the subject that with, mm. with, with used records and buying used records can be chancy because they could be noisy mm -hmm. or something. But mm -mm 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 -mm. when you look out and you get a good used record, mm. first of all, you know it is 100% analog. With yes. modern records, mm -hmm. parts of them might be digital. So that's a purist concern, but um, there is something about listening to a vinyl record that was literally made in the 60s or 70s mm -hmm. or 80s or something, mm -hmm. and it, it's an artifact of that time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you play that record, it's like traveling back Absolutely. through time. Absolutely. And that is an amazing thing because, mm -hmm. you know, it, th those earlier records from the 60s mm -hmm. up, up through, let's say, the 70s, the recordings are relatively simple. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of processing and mixing right. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's more like hearing what actually went down in the studio mm -hmm. is closer to really being what's on the record right. than later records where they may be a lot more mixing and they may mm -hmm. have overdubbed guitars or drums or horns or brass, mm -hmm. you know, six months after the band left the studio, right? right. But when you listen to a record from 1960 or 65 even or so mm -hmm. that didn't really happen they just yeah. played and that's what's in the record yeah absolutely so i mm -hmm. I, I love that part of it it's like mm -hmm. traveling through time. traveling through time 100 percent. yes mm -hmm. so uh all right so should we travel through your system yes right. i'd love to show you my system now right. we're back with may and his system these speakers it, pretty much your entire system is is gaylord right yes right. one gaylord right so and where is he based uh he's based out of california Mm -hmm. uh, Sacramento. So he makes speakers and electronics. That's kind of unusual. Yes. So Ray is uh, Ray owns the company. Um, Ray uh, makes everything uh, that that's music, <laughs> right from um, power um, blocks to power uh, regenerators. I mean, not regenerators, but power conditioners, sort of, uh, to power cords, speakers, preamplifiers, amplifiers, and everything. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive for a small company. And he's he's the primary designer for everything. Yes, he's the primary designer for everything. One man show. Huh. So what's special about the speakers? Now you said this finish is not a standard finish, right? This yes. Is, okay. So this finish is uh, MD, 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 MDF, but um, I believe the production ones are mahogany. They look beautiful, gorgeous, okay. gorgeous speakers. I guess when I upgrade, I will get the mahogany. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, these speakers um, or bookshelf speakers. Uh, when I got these from Ray, um, I thought these could not be better than my tower speakers, the Audio Physique Tempo 5s that I had. Right. But Ray promised me that these will overtake, the bass will overtake some of the um, floor standards. Um, and uh, he just wanted me to try it, and I did. And I also got the um, sound anchor uh, s uh, stands for these speakers, uh, which by themselves are like 70 pounds each, I think. I know, uh, I know. <laughs> I'm of those. Yeah, in fact, that was Ray's suggestion too. So I ended up uh, getting them and I love these speakers. The, and what is the model? Uh, it's called VG18. Okay. Uh, he also has another model called Return of the Legend, which has another bass driver, okay. which is um, uh, a little bigger than this one. Uh, but I thought, you know, for my small 400 square feet apartment, this should be good enough. Well, actually, the piece on the right is a power supply for the phono preamp that's on the other side of the turntable, right? Yes, that's correct. And then the little tube guys? That's... The little tube guy was my primary phono preamp until I upgraded my, uh, my system, my uh, turntable, from a Project Carbon Esprit to a Scoutmaster. Okay. Um, I ended up also upgrading my... Um, Phono preamp to a Lehman Audio uh, Decade. Okay, which looks like this. It's just another box over here. Okay, 
And then uh, the power amp. So it's a mono block. There's two. Yes. So um, these use uh, 6550 tubes. Uh, they put out about uh, 110 watts per channel. And these amps are called Nirvana. Uh, so Ray's company was originally called Legend. And I believe about 10 to 15 years ago, mm -hmm. the company's name was changed to Bon Gaylord from Legend. That's why those amps say Legend on them. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> good, good point. Yes, but um, the, the amps, I mean, it's just the chassis that's old, but everything inside the amp has been upgraded to the newest uh, components that uh, Ray has. Okay. Um, so that's another thing that Ray does. Uh, I can send back my equipment to him when he has new updates mm -hmm. and he will update them and he will send them back to you. Um, so these amps um, are fantastic. In fact, um, when I got these speakers, I connected them to uh, the shit ager uh, amps. Put back in the picture. Yes, the shit ager amps. Uh, those put out about 20 watts per channel. I believe they were class A uh, yeah. extension, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I guess. Right. Uh, they were fantastic um, uh, amps, but then I thought I could use a little more power with these uh, speakers. So I decided to get Ray's monoblocks and it made a huge difference. Mm. Uh, the shit was able to drive my audio physique without any issues. The audio physics were also four ohm speakers. These speakers are eight ohms. Um, and Ray said, you know, the synergy works well with his mono blocks and his speakers. Yeah, sure. um, I believe the speakers also have uh, ceramic uh, tweeters um, as opposed to aluminum, I guess. Um, yeah, Ray's cables, um, they are flexible. I don't know what's inside them, but they sound great. <laughs> okay. um, and uh, Ray sent those cables to me. I thoroughly enjoyed them, so I ended up buying the cables from them. Uh, they are bi-wired cables. Um, the amp has uh, 4 ohm and 8 ohm output and I'm using the 8 ohm output for okay. uh, the amp never gets hot You know that was one of my primary concerns uh -huh. of using a tube amplifier um, Because I live in a small studio, you know, what if it gets too hot uh, and but the amp never gets hot like I can literally put my hands okay. on the grills uh -huh. and It's it's not even warm. So, you know, I, I kind of like that aspect of the amp okay. And there's actually one more amp which is I think higher than this mm -hmm. Uh, which I didn't even ask because I felt like I didn't need it. You know, this was great. <laughs> okay. So then the turntable, mm -hmm. the the one definitely non <laughs> Gaylord piece in the system. Yes. Well, there's others, obviously. Uh, so that's a VPI and it's a yes. Scout. Yes. Yes, it's a VPI Scout Master. So again, I didn't know what to get. You know, I was super new to um, uh, turntables, and uh, there's a VPI uh, group, and I was asking for suggestions, and people said, "Oh, there's a VPI Scout Master, which is not being manufactured anymore, but there's a refurbished unit." So this unit was designed uh, or redesigned, I should say, with an upgraded motor, upgraded platter, um, and an upgraded tone arm. The tone arm was a JMW 3D tone arm, which sells with their prime uh, model, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, um, you know, um, was uh, kind of interested in this because this looked much beefier than the prime. Uh, and I liked the look of it too. And I read some good reviews about the Scoutmaster. So I ended up getting it and again, buying a turntable is only one part of it setting up the turntable the right way is the most important biggest part of it so to get the uh, best sound out of what you already have so i wanted to get the best and i reached out uh, to the internet to find out who the best was in the city and not one but many people recommended michael trey um, so i pretty much uh, bullied him into coming to my <laughs> house and <laughs> setting up uh, this for me and he did a fantastic job and i'm loving it Oh, that's, that's great. The best. So then there's the preamp. So it's the preamp and then there's the power supply. Right? Yes, the preamp is a two chassis uh, preamp. Um, Ray separated the power supply and the uh, from the, the actual electronic components inside the preamp. To be honest, I think the preamp made the biggest difference in my sound system, uh, widening the sound stage. Really? And that was also one of the first components that I got from Ray. And I felt that the sound stage almost doubled. Like I was hearing sounds from behind me. You know, it's like, uh, hmm, wow, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's. I did not believe in preamps, to be honest. You know, I uh, when I had my PS Audio um, power amplifier and my uh, PS Audio Direct Stream DAC, I connected them directly. I did not think that I would need a preamplifier, but then I now I. You know, going back, I think it makes a huge difference in my system. Mm -hmm. And I really like the preamplifier. And below the preamp is not exactly a power conditioner? 
Yes, so Ray calls it the live performance and Ray also does not sell this live performance on his website. He only gives or makes these for his uh, uh, customers that own all of his uh, components. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like a special thing that yeah. uh, you know, so is made. So all of them are plugged in through that? Yes. Okay. So it has eight outlets. Mm -hmm. So all my components are plugged into it. Um, digital, analog, everybody. Digital, analog, everything, okay. yes. So then we have the, it's a Lehman uh, phono preamp, right? Yes, it's a Lehman Decade phono preamp. I was reading a lot of reviews and I didn't know what I wanted, but then, you know, I um, was I was looking at the Lehman Black Cube, uh, but then the Decade was one step above the Black Cube and, you know, I thought, okay, I will get the Lehman uh, so I can do justice to the Scoutmaster. <laughs> uh, and it sounds amazing. It sounds great. Um, I compared it to the Cord uh, Huey um, uh, Phono preamp as well. And I thought I liked the uh, Lehman Audio better. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Dave, the Cord Dave, right? Yes, that's the Cord Dave. Um, the Cord Dave is a very transparent DAC. Um, I used to have the uh, MyTech Manhattan too. Um, that's also from Brooklyn right. uh, and um, the MyTech guys were awesome but I wanted to change it up and you know again the audio file bug I guess yeah, yeah. I know. Um, to see how this sounds or to hear you know how this sounds so I ended up getting the Dave and I guess I will also be replacing the Dave or comparing the Dave soon with um, a Hugo TT2 and an M scalar combination uh, so I am uh, I'm yet to receive the combo Okay. So in the future, I will be comparing how the Dave sounds uh, with the uh, Hugo um, M Scaler and the TT2 combination. So I'd be interested Beautiful. in that. Thanks. I think we've done it, right? Yes, we've there's actually it. one more. So this component is the SOTUM or pronounced the SOM, S-O-M. I, I guess the T is silent because it's a Korean company. Um, the SOTUM is actually connected to my router and it's the renderer. So it actually is like the ultra rendu uh, that most people are familiar with. Okay. Um, and the SOTUM is connected to my uh, DAC. So what I wanted to accomplish was not connect my computer directly to my DAC, which is why the SOTUM is in between. So my computer is connected to my, mo uh, my router. Mm -hmm. The SOTUM is connected to my router. So music is not taken directly from the computer. Right. Um, and uh, I'm using a curious cable to connect my SOTUM to my DAC. And in the future, I may experiment with uh, optical connections for the galvanic isolation yeah. and see if that makes a difference. But uh, right now, no. <laughs> All right. I think we've done it. Yes. My name is Steve Guttenberg. My guest today is May, and we've, we've had a nice interview and tour of the system. Yes. You're off to an amazing, uh, you're, you're only at this, the beginning of your audio file journey. <laughs> That's so, scary, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's only going to get better from here, I hope. Yes. Yes. Now I hope I can sit I back think, and listen to yeah, some Yeah, I think you need to take a break. Yes. I think and you can stop buying stuff and just Stop listen. buying stuff and listen to music now, I guess. That'd be good. Yes. All right. Thanks, May. Thanks, Thank everybody you. out there. My name's Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Thank, Thank you. you guys for watching, and I hope to see you back here again including May, very, very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.